Hi, this is Seth Harris from Harris Home Improvement. In this video, we're going to give you a short little tutorial on how to float a wall. Now basically, the first thing you want to make sure of is uh, that you have the proper tools. In this case, we're going to be using a 12 inch wide uh, taping knife. And I have this uh, pan here that's already filled with compound, as you can see. Uh, I prefer this because it makes it the easiest. Uh, if you want to get a close-up on this. Um, when floating the wall, you want to make sure you have a good amount of compound on your taping knife, and you want to make sure that it's as even across as possible. So I take some compound out of my bucket, and I turn it around so that it's nice and flat at the top, so I can make sure I get a nice even amount of compound. And then I just take the corners off, because if you don't take the corners off, then as you wipe it onto the wall, it squishes out the side and falls onto the ground. So now that I have a good amount of compound on my blade, I can start. And when you're floating the wall, you always want to start at the bottom of the wall and work your way up uh, for a couple reasons. Number one, um, when your arm is down here, it's easier for the wrist to work its way up. And then when you're working above your chest, it's easier for the wrist to come in a downward motion. Number two for the reason you want to work from the bottom up is because it's easier, or what you want to make sure you do, is always work back into your work. That way you're not leaving any lines in your previous work. So we're just going to go up like this. And in this case, we're just doing a skin coat. So we're putting it on. And then we're taking it back up. This outlet switch there, so we're just going to go around that real quick. Get that out of the way. Notice as I am applying the compound, you get a line like that, that means there's something stuck in your knife and you gotta take it out. Either that or it's still stuck on the wall and you gotta wipe it off. Um, but notice as I apply the compound, I am squishing that compound in and pushing my blade closer and closer and closer to the wall. That's because obviously there's less and less compound on my knife and I have to get more of an angle to get it onto the wall. So see, starting with my blade on a real wide angle and then I'm gonna squish, 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 slowly bringing it in until there's nothing left on my knife. And then at the same angle, I'm gonna Wipe it right back off the wall. Trying to smooth it out as I go. And then to get into these corners, you just got to go to the side. too much if you leave any small lines like that because they're going to sand out pretty easily. And see now what I'm going to do is for the entire rest of the wall, I'm going to work my way from the top down, going right back into my wall. Another thing to keep in mind as you're floating is the blade has a curvature to it. I don't know if you can see this on the camera, 
but in one but it occurs like this, right? So one side is concave and the other side is convex. When you're floating, you want to apply with the convex side. That's that way these uh, edges of the blade don't end up scratching a line into your previous work and instead just float over the surface of it, right? On the other hand, if say you're taping uh, drywall like we did on the ceiling up there, you know, then you want to use your convex side because then what this uh, convex side is going to do is it's going to automatically fade the work out on you. But in this case, when floating, we want to use the concave side, or the, I'm sorry, the convex side, so that we're not scratching our work as we go. That's actually the purpose of the curvature of the blade. And uh, so that's pretty much about everything that you need to know for floating the wall. Happy hunting.